Soil is a resource that we interact with every single day, on the lawn and at the playground, through our food systems, and sometimes when we simply eat dirt. But soil is not just dirt. It is a thriving ecosystem full of microscopic life that plays a key role in the life-sustaining processes of plant growth and decomposition. To many of us, soil is a bland, homogeneous substance, or even a nuisance that we sweep out of our home. But the average teaspoon of soil has between 100 million and 1 billion bacteria. A single gram of soil can house up to 1 million fungi. Soil, the plain Jane of natural resources, is actually a living, breathing superorganism that sustains all life on the planet. We will take a closer look at the biology in the soil and the role that they play on a farm near you. We'll view footage from Bluebird Gardens, a vegetable farm in Minnesota. Bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa, and insects are the living soil biota. These tiny organisms help feed plants by breaking down organic matter and nutrients, and the plants return the favor by providing sugars and by becoming food for the bacteria and fungi when they die. This symbiosis represents a biological nutrient exchange, a process that protects the health of the ecosystem through the cycling of energy and matter. The microbial decomposition of organic matter creates humus, a spongy substance rich in nutrients that is essential to soil fertility. Fungi thrive throughout the soil wedging in between soil particles, organic matter, and roots. They grow on microscopic strands, or hyphae. These hyphae bind together soil particles through the decomposition of organic matter and with a recently discovered protein called glomalin. This protein is the glue that holds together soil aggregates and gives the soil good structure. Improved structure leads to greater water infiltration and water holding capacity. These characteristics can help crops survive in a drought and help farmers save money on irrigation expenses. Mycorrhizal fungi also can enter roots and help plants take up even more water and nutrients. Like fungi, Soil bacteria decompose organic material and improve soil structure. Bacteria also mineralize nitrogen, drawing it from the atmosphere and making it available to plants. Some bacteria live on the nodules of roots of legume crops, like the field peas in this cover crop mix. These root dwellers enable legumes to fix nitrogen. Free living bacteria in the soil can enter the roots of plants and enhance the uptake of nutrients and water, like the fungi. The relationship between soil chemistry and biota is essential to plant growth because bacteria convert chemicals from organic material and the atmosphere into forms that plants can actually use. Perhaps most importantly, soil biota create humus. Soil bacteria serve many functions that we are only beginning to understand. This Clostridium bacteria, for example, has even been used by researchers to treat cancer. The organisms in the soil are constantly interacting with one another. 
Nobody can describe these interactions quite like farmer and agricultural commentator Joel Salatin. This excerpt is from his talk last February at M State in Fergus Falls. The soil is full of life. It's got actinomycetes and azimobacter and gibberellums and mycorrhizae. I mean, it, it, it is a living, it is a, an amazing living thing. I mean, if you look at, at Elaine Ingham or Pat Richardson's electron microscope of the soil, I mean, we, we, we generally think of soil as just something that, you know, that they run in detergent ads, you know, to see how, how, how good you can get it scrubbed out. Um, but actually, if you look at an electron microscope, you know, uh, you look in there and you'll see this uh, four-legged <laughs> walking along, you know, lumbering along in, you know, say, uh, part of the screen. And then all of a sudden, from one o'clock, here comes a, here comes a six-legged uh, narwhal-looking thing with a spear sticking out of his front. He comes in and jabs it into the size of the root, root thing, you know, and, and juice flies over it. He sucks it up, you know, desiccates the thing right there. And before the thing can even hit the ground, here comes a, a, an eight-legged centipede-looking thing from six o'clock, you know. He comes running in with a big set of pictures on his front, and he whop, you know, knocks off the boop, 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 head. And, and before the thing can hit the ground, I mean, he's all consumed and eaten by other bacteria, other multiple critters. I mean, it makes Steven Spielberg look like a kindergartner. And this is what's happening under our feet. It's what's happening all around us. And it's a profound fact of life that we all need to understand is everything we see, everything we eat, everything we are is dependent on a world that we don't see. Agricultural producers, like Joel Salatin, should consider the life in the soil when they are making management decisions. Most of the microbiota inhabit the topsoil because that is where their food is located. They are especially prolific in the rhizosphere, which is a zone immediately adjacent to plant roots. These organisms are therefore vulnerable to chemical usage and tillage. Tillage causes erosion of the topsoil, depriving microorganisms of their home. Tillage can initially increase the food available to bacteria and fungi because it generates dead material for them to consume and oxygen, which further fuels decomposition. Over time, the microorganisms begin to starve as all of the organic material is rapidly consumed. Chemicals can adversely affect soil microorganisms in a number of ways. Glyphosate, or Roundup, for example, has been shown to be toxic to the end-fixing bacteria called rhizobia, although there is conflicting research on the topic. Efforts to analyze the life in the soil often produce more questions than answers, and so the ecology of the soil remains a mystery. But producers can't go wrong if they follow nature's approach to soil life. A balanced diversity of soil microorganisms with plenty of food. The life in the soil aids us in many ways. Without bacteria and fungi, plants and crops would not be able to access the nutrients in the soil. Even if the nutrients are applied through fertilizer, the microscopic workers are needed to break them down for the plants. Otherwise, it would be as if the plants were in a cafeteria full of food that was just beyond their reach. We also need soil microorganisms to stabilize soil structure and create humus, the lifeblood of the soil. A balanced soil ecology fosters healthy crops, thriving forests and grasslands, and promotes sustainable agriculture because soil is a living, breathing organism that sustains all life.